Welcome to a Valentine's Day edition of 805 Sports Talk, but uh, we're not going to be talking about chocolates and teddy bears and all that. We're going to be talking about CIF playoffs, which begin Wednesday for boys basketball, and uh, we'll have some boys soccer as well. Girls basketball kicks off on Thursday, uh, but we'll start with Santa Maria High boys basketball team. They host Rio Hondo Prep. It's their first home playoff game since 1985, according to Santa Maria AD Brian Wallace. They host Rio Hondo Prep. That's a Division Five Triple A game Wednesday night at 6. There's Blake Truitt. He's done a pretty good job leading that team. Joey Navarez, Kobe Medina, they can all score from the outside. Uh, they're a very prolific three-point shooting team, so they have to be on tonight to kind of advance in the playoffs. And Kenny, uh, last week you and I were kind of talking about just the emergence of those three big sports over there at Santa Maria with baseball winning championship, football making a championship game, and here is the basketball team finishing second in the LPL and getting to host a boys basketball playoff game for the first time in over 30 years. Did you ever think you'd see the day where they were this, you know, good at <laughs> at winning across all three sports? Um, no disrespect to them, but no, um, really. Um, th it is wonderful what's happening over there, um, what's happening with the big three. You know, I, th I think Brian Wallace deserves a lot of credit. I think the guys deserve the most credit. Um, I think the athletes always deserve the most credit whenever there's um, a lot of winning going on. But all, obviously, of course, I think coaching continuity over there, the coaches deserve the credit. Dan Ellington is well-liked and well-established over there. He's gonna, he'll be entering his fourth year next year and I can remember when they went through four coaches in about three years in the past football. Dave Yamati is I forget exactly what year he's in I think about his fourth or so mm -hmm. but he's well established over there they're playoff veterans by now. Um, now um, Rick A. Barrett was his first year but we know it was a blockbuster year and he'll be back again mm -hmm. but, um, but anyway um, <laughs> I do think they can make a they're seated second. I do think they have a good chance to make a run in five AAA. I don't think they belong there. The lowest basketball division. I mean, I know the CIF Southern Section Office takes a number of factors into consideration placement, but I mean, they're in a lower classification than schools such as Valley Christian Academy, Shandon. But on the other hand, Garden Grove, the top seed, is another inner city school. <laughs> they mm -hmm. are also in five AAA. So, uh, to be honest, the logic escapes me. I, I agree that enrollment should not strictly play into it, but I think in some cases, such as this one, the pendulums swung too much the other way. Enrollment's not taken into consideration at all. I think I give credit to these kids at San Maria. I'm sure these guys had a lot of opportunities to go elsewhere, go to places like St. Joseph, Pioneer Valley, uh, maybe even in Aurora Grande, but they all stayed together to help build this run. It's one thing when you hire a coach and he has continuity, but then you have to get the players to buy in. And the players on David Monty's roster, they clearly bought in because you got nine seniors on that roster, one of the deepest senior lineups I've seen. And, I mean, we already saw Blake Truett win the All-Area MVP award for football. He's looking like a threat to win the basketball MVP. Yeah, the, the playoffs will definitely determine a lot of, of those awards. We, we definitely take playoffs into consideration when we hand out our all-area awards. Moving on to Pioneer Valley, the Panthers made the playoffs as an at-large team. Um, very, almost a surprising run through the Pac-8 with, with how well they played and giving some of those top teams a, a good challenge, beating St. Joseph, Mission Prep, and we, we saw that the Pac-8 was, was pretty close, but, but they definitely showed out with some of those young players that they had. Jaden Jones had a good season. Um, Taylor Burns was a, a, a key player as well, and congratulations to Greg Lanthier leading that team to the playoffs. Kenny, um, you think maybe the Panthers could surprise some people? They're, they're on the road against St. Bonnie in the first round, and do you think they deserved a not large bid? No one, they, there's no doubt about it that they deserve it. They're, they're, they finished over 500 overall. They are 500 in what's not a bad league. Um, they had some quality wins over teams above them in the standings, such as uh, I believe they did split their series with Mission Prep. Mm -hmm. and they beat St. Joseph, I think, for the first time ever. Um, some of their losses to the teams above them were close, so there's no doubt that they deserve to be there. 
Um, can they make the deep run? I, I think they have at least an outside chance to. They do have some tools. They have, they have. I would say an above average um, front line inside big men, such as um, Matt Garcia, Jaden Jones, um, and, Ta and Taylor Burns, I believe mm -hmm. his last name is, um, and they have good smaller men, such as DJ Martinez and Sal Villa, who can shoot and play defense. So I, I, th I think they have some tools. I think they have a chance to make a run. I'm not sure how good St. Bonaventure is, but I think Pioneer Valley does have a shot to make a run in the division. Yeah, I think one thing going for the Panthers is they don't rely entirely on the outside shot. They can score inside with Jaden Jones, and Taylor Burns can score inside. Matthew Garcia has some good defense and offense, and they have a really experienced point guard in DJ Martinez. So you see a lot of these really highly touted teams that get to the playoffs, and, and their shot goes cold. It, it can kind of get you into trouble. With the team that really can cut to the basket, cut to the lane, score inside, you don't really run into that problem. So then maybe that'll go for them and, and kind of power them. Maybe they'll they'll be playing at home in the next round. We'll see how that goes, but they're on the road Wednesday night. Moving on to St. Joseph, they are at Oaks Christian. Up and down season for the Knights. They've shown flashes of, of being a really solid team. At other times, they haven't looked so great. We saw, saw them blow lead to Mission Prep, kind of struggle against Royal Grande. Um, we kind of figured out that they, the Pac-8 League was kind of up this year, and, and everybody was really kind of bunched up. Uh, what do you think the Knights need to do, Kenny, to kind of even things out and, and maybe surprise some people and may, make a run? They're in a really tough division um, up there in the, in the CIF playoffs, so it's going to be tough. Do you think they can kind of find their rhythm and, and keep going and kind of sustain some, some success here? I think what's going against them right at the start is Oaks Christian is a very tough place to play. Um, the, the fans are very loud. It's a raucous place. Um, St. Joseph, I think, is a tough atmosphere for a visiting team, but it's a smaller gym. So while there are loud fans who are close to the floor, there are less of them. Um, I think one thing in their favor, Tom Ott is a veteran coach who knows how to keep his team on an even keel. Uh, their inconsistency is one thing they have going against them. Uh, they will, they'll, I mean, they gave up the first, they scored the first points against, eight points against San Luis Obispo. San Luis Obispo got in the, back in the game, but St. Joseph scored the last nine points to win and kept the Tigers from getting the outright championship. Then on the downside, I mean, they'll put up something like a 60-48 stinker of a loss to Royal Grande and they lost that big lead against Mission Prep. They have shown they can win on the road. It's it's going to be just a matter of which St. Joseph team shows up. Mostly they've been on the good side lately. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Elihu Cobb has been really consistent for them, but uh, it's kind of tough timing for him coming in there with a really young group. If they if they had a little more experience with him leading the way, I think they would, would probably want maybe challenge Mission Prep a little bit more for that league title and maybe be able to make a deeper run in these playoffs. But I think they're probably some of those pieces that they do have, like Angel Ortiz is a year or two away from being a really good team, but they did have a, do have a guy like Alihu Cobb over there in the middle, and he's had a great, really consistent season. So we'll see if, if he can kind of be a difference maker in these playoffs. I tend to wonder if St. Joseph may be walking into riots at Oaks Christian because of what happened to Jim Binker <laughs> and the other people over there. But, you know, one thing I will point out about the Knights, I mean, you could tell the effect JoJo Walker had on that team. I mean, being a point guard, being the main facilitator and a shooter, I mean, it, I could tell that not having a JoJo Walker on that court puts so much pressure on the bigs, especially Elihu Cobb. So, I mean, now, now would be a good time to see which point guard steps up. It's interesting you mentioned the Jim Banker thing because, you know, St. Joseph is kind of looking for a, for a head football coach. Jim Chavala was the interim coach this year. So they, they kind of been looking for someone to fill that role permanently. Jim Baker's now on the market over there in Oaks Christian, and Tom Mott and the guys are going over there. So who knows? Maybe they'll mm -hmm. kind of do some extra research. St. Joseph has a solid program. So <laughs> some sneak, sneak in. Sneak <laughs> in. Some, some coaching openings. They both kind of <laughs> share that right now. But we're going to move to girls basketball. And Rigetti, um, they're going to host Lompoc Thursday night. Uh, we always like those inner area matchups in the playoffs. They're fun. We saw Rigetti play Cabrillo in the playoffs a couple years ago, and now they get Lompoc in the first round. Uh, Lompoc hasn't been its its really good self like they have been the last couple of years, but it, a, a solid team once again. Um, Kenny, you think uh, Claudius Hironis and her Braves can challenge Desiree Hitch and her Warriors in that first round matchup Thursday night? In the playoffs, you never say never. Even if it's a 16 against the one, you never say never. Um, Rigetti is the second seed. 
Um, Port Lompoc, part of the reason why they haven't quite looked like themselves of recent years is because they've been banged up. Um, I'm not sure if Daniel Morgan will be 100% or not. Lorenzo will probably have more insight as to whether she will be or not. I think one or two of their other players aren't quite 100%. Um, Claudia Torona's teams typically play um, play very tough defense. They do have some built-in disadvantages against Rigetti. Rigetti is versatile when it comes to scoring. Um, they obviously they have a as they do against most teams. They have a very sizable height advantage over Lompoc, and their and their big players are athletic. And they have two good point guards, um, starter Mercedes Arredondo and reserve Dominique Garcia, who know how to break a press and look for the mismatches to get ball. And so it it will be it'll be a tough road for Lompoc. I do like this matchup. One of our teams will come away happy. After this one. <laughs> it's funny you mentioned Danielle Morgan and helping and whether or not she's a hundred percent Kenny. She hasn't been a hundred percent in a long time. I mean she's played the yeah. whole season with that that brace over her knee and then on senior night it was heavily bandaged and she still went out and played. So I mean I think Clawpoke does have what it takes to keep things close from the early outset, but I just feel like just judging from what I have seen the brief time I've watched Rigetti play, there's just way too much depth, way too much size. And so Rigetti I think, can wear teams down. Yeah, I think I, I think Rigetti is capable of wearing down Lompoc toward the end. But, you know, if you're Claudia Torona, you have to gleam at the fact that you get to coach Maya Mendoza for the next three years. She's She's been like one of the breakout stars on the girls' basketball in, in this area. And you mentioned the, the Lompoc senior night with Danielle Morgan. She was a lone senior honored on senior night, so it shows how young they are. But uh, I think it's going to be a pretty fierce atmosphere. Uh, the student section does support that girls basketball team over there at Rigetti. It should be a fun night, and uh, young Braves are in for an experience. We'll see you know, how it shakes out, but I think Rigetti will definitely be the favorite there, and we're going to definitely be following that one closely because we, we, we expect Rigetti to make another deep run in these playoffs. Uh, shifting over to the Lompoc Valley, um, a lot going on over there with the uh, Cabrillo boys and girls basketball teams being very good. Undefeated runs in the LPL this year, so we got some basketball. Cabrillo hosting AG Wednesday night, so that's going to be an interesting matchup. AG was right there in the mix for the Pac-8 league title. Some people are, are very intrigued to see how the Pac-8 matches up with the LPL, and, and now we get a good first-round playoff matchup. Lorenzo, what are your thoughts on that one? Honestly, I feel like that this is the playoff matchup C.J. Simmons didn't want. I mean, year in, year out, Aurora Grande proves to be very well coached under coach Ryan Glanville, and I mean, to me, it's one thing to have a big night from Leandro Knight, but I'm thinking the real X factor is going to be the role players for Cabrillo. Eddie Little, Blake Beecher, Austin Olson, who's making his playoff debut with Cabrillo later on tonight. I feel like those three have to have a breakout night to help lift Cabrillo to that win. I have a gut feeling, Joe, this game's going to be a lot closer than, than what I think. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's got to be a tough matchup for Cabrillo to just have a great regular season. Uh, dominate the LPL the way they did. C.J. Simmons has done a great job. Leandro Knight, and then you get AG, a team that's beaten St. Joseph, a team that, that's right there in the Pac-8 League Championship race. Ryan Glanville has a ton of experience leading his basketball team. Uh, you know, they played in championship games before when they had Brent Vanderveen back, back you know, five, six years ago. So they have a lot of experience in the coaching staff, a, a kind of a young team with some mix of experience. So I, I think that's going to be a real tough matchup for Cabrillo. And I think it could be a toss-up, maybe playing at home We'll, we'll kind of give them the edge. Maybe uh, AG will have an off night. You know, they've lost to teams like Pioneer Valley during during the league season, but but they've shown that they can beat just about any anybody in the area. So I think Cabrillo's, you know, definitely didn't like to see that first round draw having to take on AG, but it's at home. So so we'll, we'll have coverage from that one. And, and then Thursday night, Cabrillo girls host a game, hosting Viewpoint. Um, you think that's going to be kind of a walkthrough for the Conks in that one, and they'll advance, and, and what are you seeing from that? See, I feel like the way, the way it's structured for Gabriel girls is like, I could see them maybe skating by their first two, maybe even three playoff games, but then not having Brittany McCune, not having Kiki Dow will eventually, to me, come back and just kind of haunt them. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, the situation with Gabriel girls is that at some point, you're, you're going to have to ask Alyssa McCune, the younger McCune, and Jesse Jenkins, the younger Jenkins, to grow up right away come playoff time. So you can only rely so much on Aaron Jenkins, especially like throughout the whole league run without Brittany McCune. 
Yeah, and I saw Erin play a little bit against Orchid Academy, and they just blew the Spartans out. But, you know, she was kind of, um, you know, having to take a few breathers, drinking a lot of water. She definitely has a high workload for that team. She does so much for them. So, you know, with those injuries, they're definitely going to be relying on her a lot. She's a senior now, so it's kind of one of those m defining moments that she faces right now. So I think that's going to be interesting to see how that all plays out with her future, you know, kind of winding down there at Cabrillo, and there's gonna, they're going to be relying on her. I have a good a feeling lot. if this game gets out of hand early, I could see Jared McCune pulling Aaron, even if it's in the third quarter, and saving her for the next game. All right, moving on to soccer in the Lompoc Valley. Wild Card Wednesday, Cabrillo's taking on Rigetti. We'll have coverage from that one, but then Lompoc's boys and girls teams both made the playoffs. Lompoc boys um, play Friday, Lompoc girls Thursday. Um, you expect anything out of them, those teams being able to win first round games, advance? What are you seeing from the Lompoc Valley? I like the boys' um, chances of making a potential CIF run. I mean, this, this has to be one of the more talented teams Marco Vargas has had. I felt like last year, Julian Araujo was the main guy trying to score every, literally everything for Lompoc, but I feel like Vargas, to his credit, has developed multiple scores this year. Guys like Giovanni Limas, J.D. Montalongo, there's at least three to four scoring options on that team, hence why they made a, that LPO run. As far as the girls are concerned, I mean, they, they were actually a young team last year when they made the playoff run. They only lost uh, one senior, so now they're a lot older, but, you know, it looks like they may have a tough draw at this in this kind of realm. Yeah, we thought Lompoc was, was going to be right there in the mix for the LPL title. On the girls' side, San Inez just showed too much and was able to run away with it. And then Lompoc is, is on the road in the first round. Shows you, you know, how, how close things were there for a little while. And now Lompoc's playing on the road in the first round. Um, moving over to San Inez. Uh, well, you know, we got to give them a shout out for, for having so many teams in the postseason. And Kenny, our, our playoff coverage actually started Tuesday. In a, a little bit of an odd matchup with Arroyo Grande, the host site for a San Inez Atascadero water polo game. What was that like See, seeing them in, in Atascadero kind of easing away with an 8-2 to win? Right. Uh, unfortunately for both of those schools, neither side, neither side had, a, neither side had a deep end of the pool, which I think is required if you're going to host a playoff game. So, uh, Atascadero. <laughs> was stuck traveling about 30 to 40 miles or so for its so-called, quote, home, unquote, game. And, they'll, and then they'd go on, bus on down to Temescal Canyon in Lake Elsinore, I believe, today for the next one. Mm -hmm. um, saying as, I think they did well to, or rather, it did well to get as far as it did. Lost some players from that Division Seven championship team from a year ago, moved up two divisions, um, went through a coaching change. The pool was out of commission for a while. We had the Thomas Fire, which wiped out some games, some mudslides, the mudslides, which wiped out some more games. They, they did, I think they, pers and they finished second in their league. Um, they just, they could not match a Tascadero, but they just did well to get as far as they did, I think. All right, and also got to mention Cabrillo Girls Water Polo played Thursday as well. I think they're going to host Newberry Park after Newberry Park won that wild card game. And Cabrillo was an LPL champ. San Inez finished second. Um, sticking over there in the San Inez Valley, uh, Pirates Girls soccer team, LPL champ. They're going to host Burroughs in a Division IV first round game. Burroughs won its wild card game. We'll have some coverage from that on Thursday. Um, boys basketball team is on the road. Wednesday, um, they made the quarterfinals last year. We'll see if they can kind of advance again this year playing on the road. And then boys soccer plays Friday over there at St. Inez High. And also got to give a shout out to Dunn, putting boys and girls basketball teams in the postseason. And of course, that Dunn boys soccer team is also in the post postseason. Defending champs once again. Yeah, I think two, two division cha championships in, in CIF Southern Section play the last couple of years. Alex Uribe. Longtime San Inez coach is now coaching that Dunn soccer team, so we'll see if they can make a run as well. So a lot going on in the Santa Maria Valley, Lompoc Valley, and San Inez Valley, and we'll have coverage from all over the Central Coast the rest of this week, and hopefully with some teams advancing, we'll have some coverage this weekend and next week as well, and we'll see you next week on 805 Sports Talk.